We are here for the fifth in an ongoing series as we journey day by day, week by week through The Daily Laws by Robert Greene. This is a series in tandem with The Daily Stoic by Ryan Holiday. There is a series for both of these books on the channel right now. And today's entry is from January 25th. Uh, It is a short entry, but one that I think is worth taking to heart, one that I think is worth really uh, making a note of, one that I think is really worth your time. The I'll, I'll just get into it. January 25th, change yourself from within, little by little. We humans tend to fixate on what we can see with our eyes. It's the most animal part of our nature. When we look at the changes in other people's lives, we see the good luck that someone had in meeting a person with all of the right connections and the funding. We see the project that brings the money and the attention. In other words, we see the visible signs of opportunity and success in our own lives, but we are grasping at an illusion. What, we, what really allows for such dramatic changes are the th- things that occur inside a person, the slow accumulation of knowledge and skills, the incremental improvements in work habits, and the ability to withstand criticism. Any change in people's fortunes is merely the visible manifestation of all that deep preparation over time. By essentially ignoring this internal, invisible aspect, we fail to change anything fundamental within ourselves. And so, in a few years' time, we reach our limits. Yet again, we grow frustrated. We crave change. We grab at something quick and superficial. And we remain prisoners of these recurring patterns in our lives. The answer is to reverse this perspective. Stop fixating on what other people are saying and doing. Stop fixating on the money, the connections, the outward appearance of things. Instead, look inward. Focus on the smaller internal changes that lay the groundwork for a much larger change in fortune. It is the difference between grasping at an illusion and immersing yourself in reality. And reality is what will liberate and transform you. Daily Law, what would you work on if no one was looking, if money were no object? TED Talk, The Key to Transforming Yourself, October 23rd, 2013. (coughs) Pardon me. What we're talking about here, I think, a little bit in the beginning is the idea of social media. Someone will post something that looks like a great vacation. How did they get all the money to go on that vacation? It must be so nice to go to Tahiti or wherever it is that people go. I have no idea. I don't do that thing. I don't do any of that sort of stuff. But what we don't see is that the individual posting that picture slaved away for years in order to put back the money necessary to go on said trip. We do not see that part on social media. We only see the post of... Flapper fish, or whatever they eat in Tahiti, I have no idea. I don't do that stuff. Whatever it is that they have done to get to that place, we are not privy to it through that little screen and our Instagram. So, the first talking point here is, I think, necessary. It is necessary to keep track. This right here is absolutely monumental for me all those little colored pins at the top, I write down the things that I get done each month in their day of the week. Just sort of a preview here. See all the different colors on those pages. The light green is the exercise that I get in on the day. The dark green is the money stuff, so I'll write down the hours that I work during the day. The gray pen is for videos that I've posted on this channel, etc. All of those things I am able to write down at the end of the week, I tally them. 
At the end of the month, I add them all up, and that was January's production. So in January this year, just by example, I made 72 videos for YouTube. I walked 102 miles, I believe, walked and ran. I ran a few of them. So I have that all written down. I have it all plotted out. Now I get to go back and say, well, in February, instead of 72 videos, maybe I want to make 73. Instead of 102 miles, I want to get to 105. Instead of eight miles running or whatever it is, I want it to be 10. We get to incrementally set those goals based on what it is that we have already done. But that would be impossible to do without having these things written down. By having these things written down, I can also look back and see I am absolutely worthless on Wednesdays, for example. By being absolutely worthless on Wednesdays, it throws off my production for the entire week. How? then can I remedy this Wednesday problem? Well, I get to look back and say, it's four out of the five Wednesdays in the month that I go to work, do my eight hours, make my two videos, and get nothing else done during that day. If that is the case for Wednesdays, I can look at the next Wednesday that I come to and say, why am I so beat down on Wednesdays? Well, Wednesdays are my Friday. So maybe it is that during the whole work week, I beat myself up so much by not sleeping that by the time I get to my Friday, I am absolutely burnt. If I can fix that sleep situation, I can do better during the whole week because I won't be constantly wearing down as the week goes on. So I think that what, like I say, one of the things that really helps me there is to have those things written down on a monthly, with a monthly visual, and I get to incrementally improve on them. Now, the power of every day, this sentence here really stuck out to me. The slow accumulation of knowledge and skills, the incremental improvements of work habits. One of the mantras that I give to myself all the time is the power of every day. Now, this is a multivalent phrase for myself. The two main ways that I use this, the power of every day, if I do a little bit every day and take no days off by the end of the month, by the end of the week, I'm way ahead of where I, where I would have been. By the end of the month, I have compounded on that. And by the end of an entire year, if I take no days off from a thing, I am so far ahead of where it is that I would be. Now, we often hear this number thrown around, 10,000 hours. They say, and I'm doing the math right now as, as I speak, they say that 10,000 hours is what you need to reach mastery in any subject. If you tried to do that in a single year, you would have to work on that thing 27.39 hours per day. You see the problem with that. There are only 27, 24 hours, pardon me, in the year. Now, if you stretch that over five years or 1,825 days, it becomes a five and a half hour work, five and a half hours of work every day. That's in five years to get to the 10,000 hours that you need to master something, to get to mastery, to transcend what it is that the normal person can do in any given subject. That would be five and a half hours a day for five years. Now, if you, um, what is it? 10,000 divided by 3,650 is only, only, if you were working at that thing for a decade, it would still be 2.74 hours per day. So the power of doing something every day is important and it doesn't allow you to get out of shape on that thing. Now, also, the power of every day is a phrase that I use for myself to denote that every day does have power within it. 
people waste days. You can do it. You can get through your life and waste all sorts of days if you really want to. In fact, it might, it might not come back to haunt you this year. It might not come back to haunt you in a half decade. It might not come back to haunt you in a decade if you're wasting every Saturday and or every Sunday of your life. Eventually, this thing will come back to haunt you. Eventually, this thing will add up wasting days. There is power in every day of our lives. There's power there. All we have to do is grab it. All we have to do is utilize it. All we have to do is what it is that we should be doing anyway. Wasted days will destroy you. The only question is when. So for something like an athlete, the life of an athlete, the athletic life is short. You become a professional football player, maybe you have 10 years. That is if you have everything pumping at full blast. If, however, you end up taking off three days a week, four days a week in your off season, your career will blow up faster than not. Now, I, I use this example not because there are probably many professional athletes watching this, but because it's an it's a it's a case and point that is very easy to understand. You take off four days a week and you are an NFL running back. You're going to blow up 40 pounds and you're not going to be able to get that weight off for camp. And you're going to have all that extra wear and tear on your knees during the season, on your shoulders as you fall on them every time you get a carry, etc. There is power in every day. It simply must be harnessed. Now, the last thing I have there, make your vocation your vacation. A quote from Mark Twain, I believe, that is appropriately attributed. There's a lot of quotes attributed to Mark Twain and Yogi Berra that are not really theirs. I think that is appropriately attributed. The daily law for this day is what would you work on if no one was looking if money were no object? Now, a little bit, this is, I believe, misleading. We all have hobbies. How many of us would really enjoy turning our hobby into a living, having to do those little parts of our hobby that we kind of don't enjoy anyhow? Make your, make your vocation your vacation. There is a line that I recently heard, I believe it was from Andrew Tate, who was talking about, do you think the number one concrete guy in China went to bed dreaming about concrete every night? No, he saw an opportunity and he took it. Now he's rich. This is very true. Um... How many of us would really like to make our vocation, our work, our vacation, our hobby? Would like to make work out of our hobby? I think this is worth listening to. I think this is worth understanding. I think this is worth contemplating. Do you want to work that hard at something you love? I don't know why that point is sort of cloistered into the end of this entry, but it is an interesting thing to see in so close a proximity to the ideas that are put on the page in this January 25th entry of The Daily Laws by Robert Greene. This idea of working on things every day, a slow accrual of those things that matter, can seem suffocating. I I really want to play the piano. I'm going to have to practice for nearly three hours a day for a decade before I get there? No. Not to play the piano, but to be transcendent at the piano, to be a maestro, etc. I am a weightlifter. I'm going to have to lift weights for three hours a day for a decade? To be a master at that thing? No. No, not really. There are things that will get you to proficiency. Is proficiency good enough for you? I think there are 
are portions of life where that is okay and portions where it is not. Change yourself from within, little by little. That is the law for today. That's all I have for this video. If you like or appreciate what I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with others on this same type of path. And if you find yourself here by chance but not design, consider hitting the subscribe button in order to stick around for more as there is all sorts of this type of thing on the channel and I hope to have you back for the next one.